What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video. I am Nastya Shutka. If you do not know me, well, I just told you. In this week's episode, although I do say weekly, we are past this point. I just up whenever I feel like uploading, whenever I can upload because editing takes so long. So, last time I put up a video where I did three different glasses pieces which I did for the Cambridge Art Trail back in December and I finished them off this year when I had the time. Now with that I had a lot of people interested in those glass cases and I had someone approach me for a commission. So thank you for the commission and thank you for liking my art and asking me to make it. So she actually did see one of the pieces that I already made and requested for me to recreate it. There was some confusion because the way I did these is I made them so that I can mount them onto the wall and frankly that meant I had to rip the glasses cases apart. Not realizing that people might actually want to keep their glasses cases intact to actually store their glasses. After that was cleared up, and I realized she wanted to actually have a fully functioning case. I went on a journey to find whatever cases I had in my house, which was not many. Have to thank my bestie for providing me with some glasses cases. And I also had to thank her mom for donating even more to me for future projects. So thank you, thank you, and thank you for supporting my ass and giving me those glasses cases. Cause I was about to embarrass myself and go to Specsavers to like, I don't know, get some fucking glasses cases out of their charity set. Because I read that they recycle glass cases. So I was like, surely they wouldn't mind if I wanted some and took some. But thank God I didn't have to go through that emba embarrassment because I would literally, well actually, do I even care? I probably would do it anyway. I'll probably do it when I run out of glasses this time because I only have like four left. Anyway, we sidetracked. So once again, thank you for the commission. And thank you, you guys, for coming to watch this video. Hopefully you're going to enjoy it. I know you haven't seen anything yet, but leave a like, leave a comment, press the notification bell, share it with people, whether you like them or not. And with that said, I think we should keep it short. And off we go to make this lovely, lovely glasses case. So before we actually get started with the interesting parts, I do need to start off by actually filling in these glasses cases. So I have this really annoying dent right in the middle. So I'm getting just some air dry clay because I would have probably used wood filler, but I didn't have any on me. I made the clay into a sort of paste so that I could put it into those engraved crevices. And once I over sort of saturate so them to get the clay this i then took a sanding block I'm and i sanded here. it down so that it was nice and so i'm just going to sand it down case. to get here this way when i went to paint it you wouldn't be able to notice where the engravings were and the paint would be very smooth and it seamless as if there was never any engraving in the first place so now that we finished all of that prep work all of that satisfying sanding it is time to actually get onto the painting and the actual, I guess, aesthetically pleasing part of this entire project because honestly, I loved watching back this footage. The colors, the layering, like wow, I made myself happy doing this. <laughs> so off we go. So this is where I actually made my mistake. I thought that my client wanted this specific design which I have on the table here. I have two designs which I would consider to be blue, although this one is definitely more on the purple spectrum. I misunderstood and decided to start sketching this design and colour my glasses case to be purple. Only when I started actually doing the initial sketch did I realise that this was probably not the correct one. So we're just going to take this moment to delete it. Bye bye. And here we're going to be sketching the real design with the actual colorway. So I did mention it in my previous video how this sort of design came about. And in university or in general with my art, I am quite obsessed with patterns. And so I made my own patterns and I didn't really have a sort of project to put them towards like I had drawn them, but I just did it for fun, I think during COVID. And I wanted to utilize them in a style in which that I felt was more appropriate to how I like to do my art and everyone I'm sure everyone knows at some point an artist is obsessed with eyes because obviously the eyes are the window to the soul and it's just one of those things that it's like the first complicated thing that you can draw 
and that you were drawn to. I was looking for a project that I could easily do because I was sort of burnt out from university work and I wanted something simple that I just loved. I was like, cool, I'll just use my patterns and I'll put eyes on it and I'll do it on glasses cases because I was also very obsessed with recycling things because it was COVID and it was so hard to find. I didn't really have good access to finding canvases and buying stuff. So I was like, I'm just gonna use random shit that I have in my house. So I was using like chopping boards, glasses cases, like VHS tapes. I was all over the place with what I was drawing on just to make it more fun for myself. Yeah, I took this glasses case, ripped it apart, decided to draw this on it, and I absolutely fucking loved the design that I made. I ended up making a few more, but nothing... I was trying to experiment with 3D as well, because I was using clay at the time, and it just... One kind of banged, but it didn't bang hard enough in the way I wanted it to. So this was the only one that came out of this like four piece project that I did that I actually really liked because the other three were just, I don't know, not it to be honest. Looking at the two colors together, I am realizing that I think I've drawn this a little too dark and I just want to color match it a bit better. So here I go repainting again. <laughs> After my art trail at the Gallery V, I was like, okay, I need a project to do that's also quite small and quite easy because again, I was burnt out from doing a very heavy stitch piece at the time, which was, I think, my cherry piece. And I was like, again, I want to take minimal equipment with me. I want to make this really easy for myself. And so I redid this project. Again, it's so simple, but when it's finished, it just looks so nice. And so I'm very happy with the design that I've chosen. And I was so happy that this client of mine wanted to recreate the original piece for herself so again thank you so so much for giving me the opportunity to do this again and improving it in aspects that i wanted to improve from the first one although i do think the first one bangs pretty hard anyway i did do a few things differently with this one to make it even better now onto the actual process of how i made this so i start off with putting down the base color that I want, which in this case was turquoise. I guess it's turquoise, like mint, would you say? And then afterwards I use a biro to sketch out the design. The reason I use a biro is because I use gouache and biro shows up really nicely from underneath the gouache. And I don't know if this is to do with the material of the glasses cases that I was using, but it just helps me be able to not lose my design from underneath. I'm one of those people who I hate like sketching and then losing it under paint i really want to be able to see what i've drawn especially in this case because it is quite cartoony it is quite cell shaded i wanted to be able to see exactly what i was doing without having to like improvise if it was covered by paint so the biro comes up really nicely from underneath the paint and then i start doing the whole design to keep the vibrancy of the next colors that i'm going to put down like the greens and the reds I do actually put down a white base, as you saw earlier, just on all the colors that are gonna be different from the green. So if it was blue, I'd probably not put down a layer, but because I do have that yellow and that red, I really want them to pop so that they are not compromised by the green. I then start putting the different colors, like the reds, like the yellows and the greens, and that way I can work bit by bit putting down what I need. I can't say that I have a method in doing this in particular. I don't really put down every color and then shade. I just kind of work in how I want to. So with the background, I just put down the colors because it's easier that way. And I didn't really do a lot of shading in the background. The shading is primarily in the eyes. That's where I wanted the, although it's quite a busy pattern and composition, the focus is still on the eyes. Like the eyes need to pop. So. Obviously, I focus all of my blending on there. I blend them straight away because gouache acts like watercolor, so it sets very, very quickly, but it has that opacity to give the color and vibrance that I want without having to use acrylic. Because I really do not enjoy the shininess that acrylic has, especially for this specific type of design on a glasses case. I don't want it to be bumpy. I don't want it to be super textured, and I don't want it to be glossy because as well acrylic paint I feel like would 100% chip very easily off of this glasses case unless I was to sand it down across the whole board. So now you can actually see me getting my Posca pens out and outlining the whole thing. Like I said earlier, the style of this piece is still quite graphic, cartoony, cell shady, 
so I do grab that black liner out. It is something that's sort of like a callback to the old art style I used to do. I think everyone also has gone through a phase where they did manga, and some people still do manga, which is great, wish it was me, but I didn't end up sticking to that. I ended up going down the line of fine art. So for me, it is quite nice to go back to that time, sort of the way I did do manga, and a big part of that was fine lining every piece that I made, and that's something that I still really like the look of and I don't really actually enjoy doing realistic portraiture so that black line comes back with chest every time and I love it. I also use it to outline all of the shapes and patterns in the background because I do think that they pop just that extra bit even with all the colours and all the outlining all together they just complement each other really nicely. One of the last steps that I add when doing these pieces is actually getting white paint and adding some highlights. Originally on my first case, it was actually a white Posca pen, but for some reason I just haven't rebought a white Posca pen, which I still should do. So yeah, I ended up just getting paint and doing sort of little lines and sort of accents. It highlights areas and sort of disperses that flat colour because I, again I don't do shading on the pattern on the background so I do find it sort of a necessary touch. At this point I had done everything that I deemed necessary and I put my first layer of podge, podge modge, mod podge down. <laughs> okay so one problem that I have now noticed that the first layer of mod podge has dried is that the colours are just not as vibrant as I want them to be so and you can still see the marks on some of them so I want to brighten up the colour and hopefully that layer of Mod Podge will stop the pen from seeping through so I can actually get a nice colour down. So, fingers crossed. As you can see, I'm just here fixing all of my mistakes because sometimes I like to take the easy slash lazy route and that always ends up biting me in the butt and I always have to end up doing things twice over. And yet I never learn, so here I am doing that exact same thing. However, I will say that I don't know why, but on the glasses case that I originally did, I didn't have this problem. I was able to cover up all of the biro with the gouache from the few layers that I did, but I do think that the material does differ from this glasses case to the other, because again, I'm not very much picking them. I'm just getting what I have and using it. I did debate throughout the entire project if I was going to do the back or not so I kind of left it for me to figure that out later so I did the front completely finished it mod podged it and then I was like okay well the back looks super empty I cannot just leave it blank with the turquoise color so I decided to just put the pattern on the background because I also didn't think that redoing the eyes on the back would benefit the design in any way so I think just a simple visualization of the pattern at the back was the better option. So just like I did for the front with the eyes I just repeated the whole process for the back. So with that said I am just going to leave you guys to see this last bit of the video in nice peaceful not silence but without my voice so enjoy.
With that, I am gonna add the last layer of Mod Podge to the front and the back to seal this project in place. I'm not even gonna lie, I think I made this look so, so good. So thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like I said before, leave a like, leave a comment, press the notification bell, share it with people. And with that said, If you have liked this project, tell me below what you liked about it. Also let me know if you want to see different colours and different styles because I do have five more cases which I'm going to be painting and putting them up for sale. So stay tuned for that. If you have any awesome recommendations then I might take that into account when making them. So leave that in the comment section below so I can steal your ideas. <laughs>